I can't remember what it was. I'm awesome. <sighs> Jacob is awesome. That's true. Give a nice round of applause to Jacob. All right, now he's getting better. I know, I know. You're better at that than I am. Oh, they applauded right, you right. when you said give you a nice round of applause better than they did when I said that. Give Greg a nice round of applause. <laughs> hey. Tell you. You're gifted at that. It's all in the gift. tone of voice. It's, it's a gift. Voice. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. I've got a very special treat for you tonight. Oh, oh. Down here at Opa's. <laughs> this guy, you guys know him, he runs, he it literally puts together and runs Comics for a Cure. I think last year they raised over $10,000 for, uh, was it, what was it? $16,000 last year in February. And it all went to breast cancer, right? Was it? Yeah, the cancer, American Cancer Society. So uh, uh, he uh, has, travels around, not only the state, travels all around, does stand up, and he also has a job as well. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> give a nice round of applause to a very special guest, Jeff Robinson. Yeah. Mr. Robinson. This is the first time I've ever had that intro. He also has a job as well, lest you feel sorry for me. And as you can see, I have a coat and I've got my own shoes. It's, it's working out nicely. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, thank you guys for coming tonight. This is really nice. Uh, Gray and I were just talking Monday night, and he told me that this was going on down here. So uh, thank you for supporting live comedy. Uh, this table right here, thank you for hanging out so long. And uh, you folks, enjoy your last night out with Bob, because I think he's about had it with all of you, to be honest. It's, uh, and again, another round of applause for everybody who's gotten up here. It's, it's really... Uh, When they say it, it, it's hard to do and it's nerve-wracking, you know, you kind of exponentially multiply that because it is, especially first time. First time right there. Dude from Hilton Head, let me just tell you something. 38 degrees here tomorrow. What the hell's wrong with you? <laughs> I will give you my address. You give me yours. You'll never see me again. I, you think I'm kidding. I, that's, uh, oh, thank you. Thank you. I will do my best. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, so this, yeah, I, I said I'll come by. I'll see how you know what it, what it looks like. And we'd love to have a couple of you guys uh, come out to to comics in February. We'll see how it goes over the next couple months. But uh, but thank you for just coming out and, and supporting this. Uh, and thank you, Allie, for taking my banana joke. I was going to do it. I was going to open with it. And uh, I'm completely out of whack by that whole. Uh, so what is this? This is December. Yeah, fin finals are done, so it's close to Christmas, right? It's December 15th. Yeah. And uh, so we're getting there. And who's still got shopping to do? Who's not done shopping yet for Christmas? You still? Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, where are my Black Friday shoppers? Where are the folks that went out on Black Friday and got the shopping done? Right? Right there in the corner, right? Bob? Bob? <laughs> Little do you know, Bob stocked up on joke books on Black Friday, but darned if you're going to hear one of them. That's you. Yeah. That's right. My uh, my mom and her family. She's got sisters. They all are big into the Black Friday. They uh, they they go to bed early. They get up early. And the husbands, the men in the family, chastise them to no end for getting up this early and doing this. These are the same men. I will tell you who a week later uh, get up at 4 a.m. to go put on a bunch of bright orange clothes and go sit in a tree. So really, <laughs> who's stupid? You know, I don't know. That's right, turn about as fair play. And you ask them why they go out and do that, why they go hunting, and it's like, well, I like the sport of it. Hunting, I'll tell you right now, is not a sport. You give the deer some guns, then you got yourself a sport. <laughs> then you got yourself a sport. You got him down there, and look, he doesn't think I see him. He's got that orange hat on. I see him. He smells like deer pee. I see him. <laughs> I see him. 
trying to get my shopping done, trying to get caught up on everything. And I was at the mall the other day trying to finish uh, out what I had to do and uh, walked by a Spencer gift shop. Seeing these stores in the mall, Spencer gifts. They had a little A-frame sign out in the front. It said, do all your one-stop holiday shopping here. <laughs> and I thought, well, beautiful. This works out because it just so happens that I need an inflatable Simpsons chair, an I Heart beer hat, and a black light marijuana poster. <laughs> Grandma is done. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Hard to know what to get uh, when you're out there. Unless you have, you know, I got a teenager. I got a teenager video games. That's what you want. The video games. 14 wants video games. And uh, so we're out looking at those. And, and we have a lot of them. We have the Wii system at home, which you know, I play a little bit. And I'll just give you some advice right now. Let me just tell you right now. If you have anything to do in the evening, any driving that you've got to do, do not spend the hour or two before you leave playing Mario Kart. <laughs> Okay, I did this the other night. I had a 7.30 meeting. My son and I get five races in before we go. I get in the car to go to the meeting. I'm swerving in and out of traffic. I'm chucking banana peels out the back window. <laughs> Throwing a couple tortoise shells at the guy in front of me. It's... I get to where I'm going, no trophy. I don't know what happened. It was, uh, it was upsetting. Upsetting. I'll tell you what not to buy. I'll tell you what gifts not to get. This is the worst gift you can possibly I'll just share this with you. Don't buy for anybody, 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 instant lottery tickets as gifts. Okay, don't buy those. Two reasons, two reasons, okay, two reasons. Uh, number one, they scratch off all the tickets you get them, they win nothing. <laughs> Because then you gave him some cardboard for Christmas. That's what you gave him. And then what do you say? It's like, hey, uh, I saw that Martha Stewart. If you collect enough of those shavings, you can make a nice paperweight. <laughs> Second reason you don't give them, they do win something. Because then you're just like, what'd you get? 5,000. Oh, wow. Awesome. Congratulations. No, you enjoy that. That's great. And thank you for the Snuggie, by the way. I will wear this. I will wear this. Anyone have a Snuggie out there? Do you have your Snuggie owners? Yes, one? You like it? Good. Okay, good. I don't have one. I don't have one. I, I you know, I can't be convinced to go buy it. The, uh, the commercials don't help. I'll tell you that. The, uh, you know where the family at the football game goes after? The mothership. That's where they all go after. They're in the Snuggies. And that's not entirely it. I could I tell you who could who could sell me a Snuggie, and it's too late now. Uh, Billy Mays could have sold me a Snuggie. Because that guy, Billy Mays for the Snuggie. You never heard that, though. You never saw him do Did that guy yell everything everywhere he went? <laughs> Honey, Billy Mays with a question about dinner. <laughs> Life cut short right there. I would have loved to have heard Billy Mays audiobooks. <laughs> Not the book Silence that we were talking about earlier, but the Billy Mays actual audio book. Billy Mays reads A Tale of Two Cities. <laughs> it was the best of times, it was the worst of times, and then they found Mighty Putty. <laughs> no. I'll tell you what though, you find someone who can mix the Snuggy and the Sham Wow together, <laughs> I'll buy 10 of those. <laughs> Because if I could lay on the couch, stay warm, watch TV, and spill a two-liter on myself and not have to get up, <laughs> man, where do I sign up? I will take that. Very nice, very nice. My, uh, I have a stepbrother who was done with his shopping. He was in New York City uh, after Thanksgiving, and he uh, he he showed me. He's like, "Hey, check out what I got. Check out what I got. he bought uh, on one of the street corners the fake Rolexes. Same thing as the fake Rolex. And He's like, "Hey, check it out. Check it out. Look what I got. Look what I got. Perfect. Check it out. Check it out. Does that look fake? I'm like, well, yeah, it looks fake. It's like, oh, how can you tell? Like, uh, well, the guy wearing it tipped me off. Uh, looks, uh, looks nice with that slipknot shirt you got on there and uh, matches the duct tape on the back of your car. That's, uh, that's, that's fancy. I don't know. You guys gonna go home for the holidays? Home for Christmas, yeah. yeah, yeah. Far away, try to see the family, see friends. It's nice to do that, right? Uh, I get to do that. I get to go home and uh, get to go uh, shop with my dad for the big holiday dinner. And uh, anybody in here, if you ever have the opportunity to shop with my dad, please go. Because it's, uh, it's fun. It's an adventure. Uh, you know, we get to the store and really never never trust me to get anything on the list that he gives to me. What do you, what do you got? What do you got? Non-dairy creamer? Okay, it's got to be fat-free. Make sure it's fat-free. Fat-free! So bring it back. Fat-free? Fat-free? Okay, next. Donuts. 
I don't know what the juxtapositioning of the donut and the fat. I don't know if there's some sort of mental thing there. I don't know what that is, but we get that. Go over to the frozen food section, and uh, maybe you've seen this if you've been to Kroger, you know, something like that. All these restaurants now are packaging and selling their own brands of food in the frozen food section. You've got uh, Bob Evans. You can go buy Bob Evans food. Uh, Fridays, you can get the Fridays food. And my favorite now in your grocery store, Hooters. Uh, you can buy frozen wings from Hooters because apparently at some point some guy out there went, hey, you know, I'd really like to have the subpar taste of Hooters food with none of the atmosphere. Uh, you know, I just see a guy out, hey, honey, I'm going to nuke some wings. Go put the flannel jammies on. We're going to have a night. Oh, yeah. We get over to the, uh, the health and beauty aisle, and we've got aspirin on the grocery list for, you know, the hangover, post-holiday post, uh, post -holiday hangover. And, uh, and my dad, God love him, you know, he's, he's become a little skittish, a little freaked out since, you know, all the terrorism stuff that's going on in the world. And he says, okay, Jeff, we got to get some aspirin, but make sure when you get down there, make sure that there's cotton in the bottle, make sure the lid's on the bottle, make sure the bottle's sealed, make sure the bottle's in the box, make sure the box is sealed, because, Jeff, you never know, you never know what some freak might put in this stuff. All right, we check it, it's good, it's fine, we throw it in the cart. We get to the end of the aisle. A woman we have never seen before is handing out meat on a toothpick. My dad's like, oh yeah, that's good. <laughs> I'll get another one of those. Yeah. All right, yeah, I don't want to take too long tonight. This was uh, this was a wonderful evening. I thank you guys for, for coming out. Just uh, do a couple more things for you here before we, before we go. Uh, do we have dog owners? Any dog owners out there? Yeah, good, good. Any multiple dog owners? Good. How many dogs? How many dogs do you have? Two? Okay, we have three. We have three dogs. Uh, very fun, very different personalities. We have one who is a, she's kind of a beagle, uh, dachshund mix. And a uh, very sweet dog, had her, had her at the vet the other day. And uh, when I went in there, there was a, a girl in there um, and was sitting in the waiting room and had a little cage on her lap. And in the cage was a hamster. Really? You take a hamster to the vet? Do you? It's like getting a disposable lighter fixed, isn't it? <laughs> You've done, okay, you know, there you go. I, I don't know. We have a uh, we have a we have a husky. Uh, big husky likes to run, likes to go out and run. Yeah. Very weird trait about this husky. He'll uh, you put him outside to you know go do his business. He'll be out there for ten minutes, do nothing, come back in, turn around immediately, and need to go back out and pee. That's what he does. And I can't for the life of me fathom what goes through his mind because in our perspective, you know, from our standpoint, that's like being in the bathroom for ten minutes and then just what the heck did I come in here for. <laughs> That's right, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you take these dogs for a walk and they pee like 24 times. I'm not kidding, on everything. On everything. And again, can't fathom it. Can't fathom it. Just went to the restroom back there. You didn't see me come out. I'm like, do you have any other bathrooms? <laughs> well, no. Why not? Well, you're supposed to do what you need to do in there and you're done. Do you have any other bathrooms? That, I, I don't get it. I don't know. I don't know why they do it. And we have a we have a, a beagle. We have a beagle. Uh, any beagle owners out there? You do? Okay, very good. Uh, perhaps you'll agree with me then uh, that beagle is an acronym. I do think you're telling them to be quiet. You think I'm going to call them up and have them do stuff? Or, okay, you're right. Sorry. That's why you don't sit at the front table? Uh, beagle. Uh, the letters in beagle stand for basically eats and or gulps literally everything. Yeah. That's what it is. That's what it is. They do. They say, Gar garbage, your food, my food, whoever's food, dirt. And I will not. Uh, you know, we're, we're friends here. Uh, you know, my, my beagle eats poop. He does. He does. And, and he just goes out. And, and I don't understand it. I don't get it. But he does. And uh, not an uncommon trait though, because I get the doctor's Foster and Smith catalogs, which you've seen for the animals, and they have this product in there specifically to prevent this. And the tagline on this product is, buy it, make species taste awful. That's what it says. <laughs> if I had it here, I would show it to you, but I don't. And I don't get that because I look at him and I think, well, maybe he knows something that I don't. Maybe he knows something that I don't. I don't know. <laughs> It's fine. Oh, this is this is just this is just an aside. This is an aside because we're in Delaware. Maybe you saw this Christmas concerts coming up. Greg and I were talking about this the other night. The uh, it's over. Did you see? Did you see? 
It is over, but let me get to the point and we can discuss this. Did you see the signs for the Kenny Rogers concert? Oh, yeah. The yellow yeah. yard signs? Yeah. Okay, I started seeing these driving around Delaware, and I saw a lot of these, and then as the time went on, I realized that I, I didn't see any print ads, I didn't see any TV commercials, didn't hear any radio ads, just the signs. And I thought, what kind of marketing meeting were they all sitting in where his manager's like, all right, Kenny, you got the big Columbus show coming up. We're going to do a social media blitz. We're going to hit the TV. We're going to hit the radio stations. And Kenny's like, no, no, no. I got another idea. Yard signs. I'm sorry, what? Yard signs. They're going to be yellow, and we're going to put them out around town. Kenny, I really think, don't tell me. I'm the gambler. I'm the gambler. I know when to hold them. I know when to fold them. We're doing yard signs. Thank you for listening to that because I can't do that anywhere else. Nobody else will know what I'm talking about. So. Anyway, oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Let me leave you with one thing. I've been up here too long. Let me leave you with one thing. Uh, if we have some insomniacs out there this evening, anybody who can't sleep has trouble sleeping, uh, I like to pass this along to people as a little bit of advice. Uh, if you have the DVR, if you have the VCR, as I have, uh, set it, record the joy of painting with Bob Ross. You seen this guy? Yes, of course. Yeah. You know, God love him because he's, you know, passed away and everything. But the guy's got the most soothing voice in the world, bar none. You could sleep for a week straight. Wake up, have six triple espressos. You turn him on in ten minutes, you're drowsy because he's that soothing, you know? He gets the brush, he's like, and we're just going to get our fan brush. We're going to get little Van Dyke Brown. And we're going to paint a happy little tree right over here. Happy, happy little tree. Or you can paint it over here because it's your world. It's your world. Happy little tree. Happy tree. You know what I'm going to do here? I want to give this tree a friend. Because no one should be alone. No one should be alone. Happy, happy little trees. I think I'm going to make these autumnal trees. Going to get my big brush, beat the dickens out of it. We're going to get some cadmium yellow, some titanium white, and we're just going to dance. watching them at home, you're just like... It's got drool coming out on the canvas. And... Did you ever try to paint along with Bob Ross? In 20 minutes, he's got a stream running through the forest at the base of a mountain range. Look at yours, it's like an overhead shot of the BP spill. Dang it. Hey, thank you very much. Thank you for coming out and supporting live comedy. Please keep it up if you would like to come to Comics for a Cure. It is Saturday, February 25th at the Strand Theater. All proceeds go to the American Cancer Society. We have Tom Foss, we have Mike Conley, and QFM's Dan Orr will be there. So please join us. Thank you.